Hello, hello, it's Stumplet here. Here's an item on logarithms. Arrange the following in ascending order. Log 2 with base 3, log 3 with base 5, log 75 with base 625, and 2 thirds. Credits to the Philippine Mathematical Olympiad for this item. As usual, pause this video if you'd like to give this item a try. But if you're done, let us dive into the solution. Alright, so we take a look at the four numbers over here. Um, yes, um, the two-thirds is okay, but the rest of the numbers, we don't really know what's the value of those unless we do know values like log 2, log 3, log 5, and those. But they are not really uh, well-known values, so we probably don't know them. So what we want to do is probably some manipulation, uh, probably using some properties of logarithm as well to help us solve the question. Now, uh, there is something uh, interesting to take note of because the third term the logarithm of 75 with base 625. Um, 75 and 625, they are very, I'm going to say, interesting numbers because 75 is 5 squared times 3, all right? And then the 625, that's just 5 to the fourth. So maybe we have um, something to do with 5s and 3s, and that's probably going to be helpful. So let's try to see what we can get from here. So um, the other thing is that, well, I think I could write the, those terms, uh, all the logarithms, as a quotient because well, essentially I could express everything in terms of uh, log 2, log 3, or log 5. So uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to write all of these logarithms in terms of a quotient via the, uh, the change of base. So the change of base formula, so I could have log 2 divided by log 3 for the first term. The second term becomes log 3 divided by log 5. And I'm going to apply uh, these findings in the third one already. So the third term, it's going to become log 75. And that's log of 5 squared times 3. Again, by the um, properties, of exponent, uh, properties of logarithms, I know I could uh, separate these two as a sum because uh, 75 is 5 squared times 3. And then your denominator, just simply log 5 to the fourth. And then the fourth one is just a two-thirds. All right. And that's what I mean by expressing in terms of log 2, log 3, and log 5. Because, well, essentially, everything is expressed in terms of log 3s and log 5s now. Now, there is this additional thing we could do. The exponent, I could put it in the front. So I could have um, this term to be uh, 2 log 5 plus log 3. All right. Divided by, whoops, divided by uh, 4 log 5. Okay, and I could uh, take a step further and uh, I'm going to split this uh, fraction into two because I, I realize I could do the following. I could have one half plus a one fourth times this log three divided by log five. Now it's a, it's a bit nice because um, I have few logarithms to consider. And uh, another interesting thing is that, well, I have this, uh, these two very similar terms. So that might be uh, easier for me to compare. So that's the first thing that I'm gonna do because uh, the second and the third term now, they do have a common log three divided by log five. That's going to be my first agenda. So let me just copy those two down. So the second number, which is equivalent to this one, let's try to compare this number with, so some sign over here. Let's try to compare it with the one half plus one fourth times the logarithm of three divided by the logarithm of five. So essentially the uh, the third term. All right. Now, this is not an equation or an inequality, but uh, we could do minimal stuff to compare these two numbers. Now, I could subtract or add both sides by the same number. I could multiply and divide both sides by um, the same number, uh, but I have to make sure it's positive because negative numbers um, and inequalities, they don't really work well in division and multiplication. So those are the stuff that I am restricted to. Uh, but that's going to be enough for us to solve the question. So let's try to start with, okay, let's try to subtract both sides by this one fourth times the logarithm of three divided by the logarithm of five. So I'll have three fourths of the logarithm of three divided by the logarithm of five. And then the same uh, sign here, and then I'll have a one half here. And I'm going to multiply both sides by four thirds. Four thirds is positive, so it's not really going to affect the sign of ever. So that's something nice. So, all right, if I multiply both sides by 4 thirds, I'll have log 3 divided by log 5. The same sign here, and interestingly, I have 2 thirds here. Uh, it's 
Okay, there's a two thirds here. That's why it's pretty interesting. And uh, I could do cross multiplication here because I'm sure that um, the denominators, the log five and the three, they're both positive, right? Log five is definitely greater than zero and three is definitely positive. So I can have here um, three log three. So three times the logarithm of three, that's gonna be equal to the logarithm of, sorry, two times the logarithm of five. Now, essentially, um, I could bring this back to the exponent, so kind of the opposite of the property, but I could bring the, uh, I could bring the numbers in front back, into the, uh, back to the exponent, and I'll have logarithm of three cubed, which is essentially 27, and then the same inequality symbol, logarithm of five squared, which is now 25. And here is going to be something that we could compare now, because we do know um, the logarithm of 27, it's definitely greater than the logarithm of 25, right? So, so if, the, if the input to the logarithmic function, log, the logarithm function is um, bigger, then obviously it's going to be bigger. So uh, since we did not, uh, since we only subtracted or added, and, uh, added something to both sides and we only did uh, multiplication or division by a positive number, this sign must be a greater than symbol, this one, this one, and this one. So that's going to be uh, the idea here because we're just going to compare uh, stuff via just a manipulation. Now we get, um, aside from the thing we wanted to compare, the second number, so the second number and the third number over here. So we now know that the second number is greater than the third number. Uh, we have a pretty nice information here as well that the second number is greater than the fourth number because two thirds was one of the numbers we have to compare. All right, I mean, that's pretty good, but uh, that's not going to help us yet in finding uh, what's going to be the order of the four numbers in ascending order. So let's just remember for now that two is the second number is greater than the third number and the uh, second number is greater than the fourth number, right? Now let's go back to some of the numbers here. We have it compared. Um, maybe we could do a similar strategy, right? We could try to uh, do a similar strategy um, because Essentially, we arrived at something a lot, uh, sorry, a fraction of logarithms or a ratio of logarithms, uh, comparing it with two thirds. And I think we could do a very similar um, idea here with the first number, the logarithm of two with base three. All right, so I'm going to write uh, those down. So the logarithm of two with base three. And then let's try to compare with two thirds. Now, uh, as I've mentioned, this thing can be written, out, uh, can be written down as a ratio. So log two divided by log three and whatever is assigned here, right? And same thing, I'm gonna do cross multiplication. Again, log three is definitely positive. Three is definitely a positive integer. So no problems here. Uh, cross multiplication is gonna give me three log two, the same sign here, and then a two log three. So two log three, and I could use a property, bring the, expo uh, bring the number in front back to the exponent. So log of two cubed, that's gonna be eight. The same inequality symbol, log three squared would become a log nine. And here we have, okay, eight and nine. So eight is definitely uh, smaller than nine. So less than, less than, less than, and less than. So we have this interesting result that the first number is less than the fourth number. Okay, we could kinda add this to the, sec uh, the second uh, kind of thing we have here. So. We can now compare, uh, we already have um, some of the inequalities we need, right? We know that the second one is greater than the fourth one, is greater than the first one. And we also know that the second one is greater than the third one. So definitely we have to do some work on the third one and see where uh, does it actually uh, fit. So let's try to see things here. Okay, now let's try to check probably, okay. So the second is greater than the third. So let's try to compare probably the third and the fourth. Right? That's possible. So the third and the fourth. So just to see uh, where, like where does the third number fit in that order? So, okay, let's try to compare the third number and the fourth number. Now, I think it's uh, better for us to use um, this form, right? This form that we have over here because that, that worked pretty well. So the third and the fourth one, let's try to compare that. So I have one half plus one fourth. Again, because of the fact that, well, technically it is going to be like comparing something with um, a fraction of a logarithm, or sorry, the ratio of two logarithms. And I think that that worked pretty well in the previous two inequalities that we have. So I think this 
should uh, work fine as well. So I'm now comparing the third number with the fourth number. And let's just try to see uh, what's going to happen here. So I'm going to subtract both sides by one half. So I'll have one fourth times the logarithm of three divided by the logarithm of five. Two thirds minus one half, that's going to be uh, four six minus three six, that's going to be a one sixth. So one sixth over here. So I'll have logarithm of three divided by the logarithm of five. That's going to be something with two thirds over here. And I think we already have the result because if we go back to um, this one, since we know that the second number is creation of the fourth number, uh, this part, right, that kind of is exactly the same thing here. So we would know that the third number is actually greater than the fourth number. All right. So the third number is greater than the fourth number. So the third number is greater than the fourth number. But we do know that the second number must be greater than the third number based from one of the inequalities that we've acquired. So we should have the final arrangement. Uh, the second number is greater than the third number. And we now know that the third number is greater than the fourth number. And that the fourth number is greater than the first number. And let's just go back because we wanted this stuff in ascending order. So we have to write it in reverse. So the first number first, and then the fourth, the third, and the second. So let's just write, uh, let's just write them down. So in ascending order, right? So the first, the first in the list if we are gonna arrange it in ascending order, uh, the first number first, so the first number, that's going to correspond to the logarithm of two with base three, followed by the fourth number. The fourth number is two thirds. Next, we have the third number, the logarithm of uh, 75 with base six, two, five. And lastly, second number, which is the largest number in the list, the logarithm of three with base five. And this will be our final answer. Hopefully you guys learned something new from this video and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye. Number